evening. This is Dr. McDaniel on a beautiful, well, I'm not going to say beautiful, I'm going to say partly cloudy Saturday in New Jersey. I'm at the horse farm. That's my baby girl, Joy. She's nine. She just turned nine last month. And she's been riding since she's three. So she and my daughter, Jill, love animals. They love animals. Jill's been riding since she's five. Jill is 13 now. Joy's been riding since she's three. She's nine now. So we're here at Baymar Farms in New Jersey. The girls like having their lessons early on Saturday. They do private lessons. They've only done private lessons. Jill hates crowds a lot. So they have their lessons at time. Um, at 8 o'clock every Saturday that there isn't a, a show here so every Saturday at 8 o'clock we're here at the horse farm and um, it's pretty empty there's usually only one or two other riders here at 8 Jill went from 8 to 8.30 Joy's going from 8.30 to 9 I like it because we get I get my duties of bringing them here <laughs> out the way first thing in the morning and uh, then the rest of the Saturday is open my older son Jack he's 14 he does this uh, well, he's in the band he plays the trumpet he does um, marching band every spring now last year and this year he's in eighth grade so I have to have to drive him to his um, to the high school where we live because he has to go to a parade today so I have to bring him up to the high school at 9 30 and then I have to run the girls around to do a couple of errands go to the grocery store uh, and then we have to we're gonna get a have a, a gift basket made for Joy's third grade teacher because her third grade teacher is retiring this year she She's been teaching for, I think they said 25 years, either 25 years or 30 years. So she's retiring from teaching third grade. So we're going to get a gift basket made for her, like Bath and Body Works or something like that, or Ulta, whichever one can do a nice basket. And then, sorry, I'm not, I'm not upset. I'm just tearing because I have allergies as usual. Um, so that's Joy. I'll put it on Joy for a minute or two. Of course, it looks far away. I don't know how to really mag it so well. There we are. She's not doing. She's not doing much right now. Of course, um, she's walking the horse, letting the horse rest a bit. Um, so yeah, today's mostly errands. I'm hoping that I can get rid of my gray roots, which are a little embarrassing, but oh well. Uh, going to dye my hair th this weekend to get rid of these gray roots. So it's um, what I would call a laborious weekend. Chores and errands. Everything we put off during the week to the weekend. But then of course the weekends are never long enough. Hoping tomorrow Sunday I'll have a day of rest. I have four kids so it can never be like a complete day of rest but a semi day of rest would be good enough for me. See, she's doing not really doing jumping right now. She's mostly resting the horse, but I'll walk around. I always think it's nice to come here on on Saturdays. It's very, it's very nice and relaxing to come here actually with the horses and um, all the greenery and the nature around us. So it's always fun to do that. Do a little walk around for people, anyone living in the city who never gets to see the outdoors. I'll do a little bit of a walk around for you. There's Joy. She's just trotting a little bit. Actually mostly walking, not even really trotting right now. Don't quite know what she's doing with her lessons right now. Anyways, that's that. So 
Uh, yesterday I spoke on hormonal acne and today I'm going to finish speaking on it. I'll give a little bit of a recap first and um, complete it. So hormonal acne is acne that uh, produ well, that's exacerbated or only um, initiated when there is hormonal stimulation. So that means premenstrual time frame, which is up to two weeks before the cycle and uh, should diminish during the cycle. So hormonal acne can flare up any time before, as long as it's um, after ovulation, which should be two weeks before the cycle. And then it should decrease, diminish, or completely go away when the cycle goes away. But unfortunately for some people, because of that time range, they'll have hormonal acne about three, two to three weeks out of every month, which of course is um, undesirable. For some people, it will be just a, a lot of superficial acne, so mostly zits and pimples. And for others, it will be quite extensive, so it'll be cystic acne, deep-seated acne. And hormonal acne is due to um, stimulation or increased activity of the sebaceous glands uh, after ovulation. And those sebaceous glands um, become overactive. The skin's natural exfoliation process cannot keep up with it. So it gets bubbled up and trapped underneath the skin layer. And usually it traps skin bacteria with it. And then unfortunately, depending on how deeply seeded that activity is and how difficult it is for the skin to naturally exfoliate, that person will either have zits, pimples, or cystic acne is what we call that. Um, the, oops, sorry. the bacteria that gets trapped determines um, the degree or the extensiveness often of the acne and uh, also determines the potential treatment. Uh, a lot of people, they know if they go to the dermatologist, the first thing that they'll do is they'll give them an antibiotic. And that's because the bacteria really exacerbates that hormonal acne, the skin bacteria. But unfortunately, everyone has bacteria on their skin. You can't get away from that. And uh, so the, the antibiotics will help minimize the amount of bacteria that causes the pustular or the yellow, um, um, the, um, the yellow liquid that accumulates in the pimple zit or the cystic acne. So once you decrease the amount of acne um, bacteria that is trapped in the acne, you decrease the severity of the acne. And then what um, all you need to do is decrease the, and that also decreases the inflammatory response. So the bacteria causes a lot of inflammation and that inflammatory response causes all the redness, the tenderness, the soreness. And once you decrease the bacteria that gets stimulated, the redness, the soreness, and um, that inflammatory response, uh, you decrease the majority of the cystic acne responses and the severity of the zits and pimples. And then if you decrease that hyper stimulation of the oil glands, you can pretty much eliminate the acne altogether. So the first thing to do is to um, prescribe the antibiotics, either pills or topical antibiotics, and that's just to minimize the bacteria that's present. And then the second thing to do is the, the hormonal cascade is due to ovulation. So if you don't ovulate, you won't have that hormonal cascade. So the second thing to do is to suppress ovulation. And that's done with the birth control pills. So the birth control pills suppress ovulation and they suppress that hormonal cascade that causes the increased 
activity or the overactivity of the sebaceous glands. So once you do that combination, that for the most part helps decrease. That's our dog baby going nuts. Uh, she's a Yorkshire Terrier. Uh, once you do that, you decrease uh, the formation of the zits, the pimples, and the cystic acne. Um, the majority of people will have a significant, if not a complete, resolution of their hormonal acne, as long as it is just hormonal, with the use of the antibiotics in conjunction with the birth control pills. Now some people will still have a degree of hormonal acne despite those two uh, medications. So a third thing that can be done is to take a medicine that decreases the um, skin sensitivity to testosterone. I think most people are aware that testosterone is the reason for uh, the majority of that hormonal stimulation also. So birth control pills also decrease circulating testosterone. They increase the protein, the sex hormone binding globulin, which is the protein that soaks up circulating testosterone. I mentioned yesterday that when the dermatologist asks us to draw hormone bloods, we do a panel that includes free and circulating testosterone for that very reason. So birth control pills help to decrease free, t t free circulating testosterone because the total testosterone isn't as important for acne as the free circulating testosterone. That's what causes uh, the bulk of the stimulation for acne. So you, the birth control pills decrease the amount of testosterone that's present. And then an additional medication, spironolactone, also decreases the skin sensitivity to the testosterone that is still circulating. So spironolactone acts on the skin level to decrease how responsive the skin is to testosterone. So you have three levels of medication antibiotics to decrease the bacteria and inflammation, birth control pills to decrease, uh, to prevent ovulation and to decrease the hormonal cascade that causes the oil production, and to decrease circulating testosterone that aids in the overproduction of oil and the stimulation uh, and um, the propagation of acne. And then spironolactone, which acts on the level of the skin to make the skin more resistant to how much testosterone, um, how much it's being affected by testosterone. So those three medications, those are the three medicines we use to treat, alleviate, decrease, or mitigate hormonal acne. And they work very, very well. Um, unless someone has a, a problem or condition where, despite all of that, they still have high circulating testosterone levels. That would be the only thing. And that would be a different talk because then it wouldn't be that they have, that they're normal, where they have normal testosterone levels, they have an overproduction of testosterone, which is called virulism. So, um, I think that's it. Um, that's the diagnosis, the evaluation, and the treatment, manifestation, the treatment of hormonal acne. And uh, I hope that's been helpful for anyone. I get patients throughout the week who have issues with hormonal acne. And um, 
I always give them that information. It works very well. And what I do also when prompted or when asked, I do try to uh, encourage people not to use a lot of harsh drying agents and to scrub and exfoliate the skin a lot for hormonal acne because you do want the skin to exfoliate but all of those drying agents will also help decrease the exfoliation if it's hormonal acne so I encourage them to do the birth control pills sorry the allergies are acting up now the birth control pills the spironolactone and um, then to see the dermatologist after about three to six months if they see me first um, to help with any additional with antibiotics and then potentially any acne that's not really hormonal acne so hope that's been helpful information today's Saturday June 7th this is Dr. McDaniel at GYN Corner and I hope everyone has a great rest of their Saturday be back tomorrow with a topic um, talk on a different topic have a great day and um, enjoy the weekend. Bye!